I have a new project. Anyone surprised? Anyone? Hey, it's Care. Welcome to my tick at the lake. You know, once in a while you just get a wild hair and you gotta you gotta follow that despite having, I don't know, eight thousand nine hundred and fifty seven other wild hairs that we're chasing down. You gotta go with that one that's just bugging you. I've been watching, rewatching old favorite junk journal altered book videos. And I just feel the need, maybe it's the seasons change, at least by the calendar it's supposed to be fall. I don't know what it is, but I just feel like I want to get some junk journaling stuff going. You know, and overall it all is junk journal stuff, but it's, un it's you know, it's glue booking and it's watercolor and it's fun sprays and it's... <sighs> One of the things that really fascinated me when I first started was the eclectic junk journals. Now, I prefer Matchy Matchy, but when I see an eclectic journal, meaning not so matchy matchy, that doesn't mean, you know, it's scattershot and it's, it has no rhyme or reason, but it's not a certain color scheme or it's not a certain theme like Into the Woods or books or Halloween. It just is. It's just a pretty thing and it has beautiful papers in it and they might not all match, but that's okay. They're all beautiful papers and I wanted it to be an altered book rather than a junk journal that I made. I wanted it to be a book, an altered book. So I went downstairs and I found this book. Sorry, Gregory, but we're going to tear it up. Egg and spoon. And that doesn't matter at all what book it is. What matters to me is that when I take an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper and I fold it in half or thereabouts, it fits into the project. That's what matters to me about the size of the book. And this one was perfect, absolutely perfect. It has this wonderful sort of ugly vintage green inside the cover, a glorious plain black cover that I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with. I'm not sure what any of this is gonna be. I just know that I wanted to start it and I might as well bring you along. Often we see people that we love to watch come out with their finished products. They can sometimes feel unattainable. They had a plan, they had all the equipment, they had all the supplies, they had all the Tim Holtz, they had all the best paper, they had all the room they could stand to use, they could have, they have the perfect craft room and all the, you know, the best of everything, plus a plan, plus the time to do it, and it's a finished beautiful project. And we look around our mess and go, I, I think I can find some paper, right? You're not alone in that, that feeling of, well, they, of course they can do it. Everything is perfect in their world. I'm telling you now, everything is not perfect in their world. It's just the picture that they're putting out there for us. Everything is not perfect in my world. I got stuff there and stuff there and stuff there. And here, you're going to go upside down for a minute. Well, maybe not. I'll show you. I'm not afraid to show you. I have stuff everywhere, stuff everywhere again, stuff everywhere. I am surrounded by chaos in this room. The rest of my house is not like this, I have to tell you. I can't stand this room like this and you've you've seen it, I've cleaned it a thousand times. Look, Christina, there's my beautiful little coffee cup. He's right there all the time where I can see him. I never lose track of him. That is a coffee cup from Australia. That's what their takeout coffee cups come look like, Starbucks. Yeah, United States Starbucks, uh, take a note. Anyway, there's crap everywhere, all over this desk, around the desk, on the floor. It is a nightmare in here. That's not gonna stop me from crafting. I don't have a plan for this project at all, at all. I know that I want it to be eclectic. I know that I wanna use some of my pretty papers. I know that I want to tear paper. I know that I want to do some collage. I wanted it to be in a book rather than me making a book. So I'm just gonna go. Leap and the net will appear, as they say. I have a few pieces of paper here and this is not gonna be a finished product. At the end of our time here together, I might have a page done, maybe. No guarantees. And that's okay. You don't have to sit down, know what you're gonna do and finish it before you leave the room. Nobody does that.
But because we watch these videos in little 30 minute increments or an hour long tutorial that has been edited and edited and edited and sped up, we think we should be able to do it in an hour. It doesn't happen that way. Not even for the people that it looks like it happens that way. So what I've learned about myself as a crafter is I'm very lazy. If I can't reach it right now, I don't want to use it. So right now I've got glue at the ready. My purple Avery or probably a better Avery. I may even, I may even use the good stuff because this is a, a not a glue book. It's something I want to last. And so I have my glue at the ready. I have my scissors ready. I have some beautiful scraps. Remember this? I This is from my password keeper. Somewhere around here. Oh, here's some more. Here's another piece. And so while these papers don't really match, they don't really all go together, they don't have to. Because, because this has been laying around for a while. Maybe I'll find a home for that finally. I don't know. But what I found out is if it's right here, I'll use it. If I have to go dig it out of a tote or find it in my closet, I don't have time for that. I just want to play. So this itch has been itching for a few days. And so last night, finally, I went down to my stash in the basement, found a book. I know that I'm going to make this into a, this will be a junk journal for sure. I've been using the dust jackets. I have a video, I'll link that below, uh, showing some of the ones that I've done. I just love them. We get old books. These, This was discarded from my library. So it has all the library protective paper on it. It's got the reinforced paper underneath the regular dust jacket. This makes a beautiful cover, soft cover, but you can reinforce it. You can put cardboard here if you want it to be less of a soft journal. I put cardboard here in the spine to make sure the spine is at least stable and sturdy. So I am going to be making a soft junk journal, soft cover junk journal out of this. Absolutely, I will be. I'm not gonna cut it or anything. I'm gonna use the spine that it already has and that will dictate the size of my 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 journal how many signatures and whatnot that's a project for another day i will be doing it for sure this is another piece that i don't i have no idea where this came from or why this is on my desk right now <laughs> i've done nothing in this color but look it's it's almost exact so i have to work that in there some way and it kind of goes with this there's a little bit of this green in here so i'll put Put these scraps together i had like i said these three pieces of paper that i recently printed when my printer was running out of ink this was another one i just did a video on my printer running out of ink but uh, these are just random prints that i will be using in here i took my book last night and i went to deconstructing it this is all the stuff that i have taken out of this book it was 475 pages, I believe. Yeah, 475 plus a few end papers. So I, I, I did do a little bit of math, but not nothing too taxing, you know, me and math. I took 475, divided it by two in order to find the approximate center of the book. When I found the approximate center of the book, I tore out quite a few you can see there's a huge gap here because I'm going to put a traveler style notebook in here, which means for those of you who are new, traveler style notebook means, you know, ideally it's for travelers. They have a beautiful leather cover and it has elastic straps and you, and you take paper, a notebook that's usually pre-made and you just slip it under the strap and it sits in there and while you're in Italy you you journal all about your Italian adventures and then when you get home you take that out you keep the, the same cover and you put in a fresh new traveler's notebook and then you go to Spain or Paris or Bahamas whatever but that's the idea of a traveler's notebook that you can take these in and out 
So it's traveler style. Traveler's notebooks tend to be a little bit thinner and taller. This is going to be nine by six. And I knew I, I wanted to put one of those in there too, just because it will have, you know, I can make use of some beautiful papers, which is why I wanted to start this. So I took out two on this side, 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 until I got to approximately what I wanted. I didn't count. I have no idea how many I took out and it's not going to matter because your book is going to be different. Then I went to the front and I just started the way the book is constructed. Some of the pages are just in there so tight and so securely that it really doesn't make sense to tear them out. So I went to where it made sense to start tearing them out and that was around the last page of the the contents. Now there's there is a few of these little strips in here. Ooh, this is laying around. This is from the cover of a 1940s magazine that my friend Leanne brought over for me. Those are laying here. Those could go in here. Get back to that last page of the contents. And there's, there's a little bit of the page left in there. I take a nice sharp pair of tweezers and I go in there and I just pull them, pull them out. You don't need necessarily sharp tweezers, just something that can get down in there. These are so sharp, they'll cut the pages if I'm not careful. So I wouldn't recommend getting a super sharp pair like this necessarily. But you have to have something to get down in there to pull that out. I just tore and I skipped a few pages and I tore and I skipped a few pages and I tore. And I did that until I reached that middle section and then I did the same from the back same thing in the back as the front this page is always it's part of this cover so that stays in this page you can see that it's glued right to that versus down into the spine so you always keep that page as well and then a page and when it felt right then I took one out and I did the same as I did the front. I skipped a few and I tore and I skipped a few and I tore. Now, then I went like this and I felt it. Does it feel right to me? Well, it didn't. These still felt very thick, meaning, wow, that's a lot of pages I'm going to have to cover. Wow, that's a lot of journaling I'm going to have to do. So I repeated the same process and I, I just went... A few pages and tore a couple out, a few pages and tore a couple out until it felt right. What I didn't want to do was take a whole bunch out of one spot. So if there was a page here taken out, well, I skipped that one and I skipped another and then I tore out so that there wasn't huge gaps like this in the front or in the back. Now, when this book has, I don't know how many chapters we saw the contents. The contents is one, two, three, four, five or six pages long. These are all chapters, 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 chapters of this book. And some of them had some really cool titles. Fresh Enchantment. I love that. Admission Denied. Double Lightning. A house has its secrets. Still later, Leanne will get this private joke. We used to work at the hospital together and people would come in with names with every letter of the alphabet. And then they'd, and when we'd say, how do you pronounce that? They'd get snotty and say, it's pronounced Samantha. Okay. It's not what it spells, but okay. Turns out this is a guy's name in the book, but I put pronounced Samantha before I knew. So this is funny. There's these whole bunch of things later, still later, there's before. Anyway, I really liked these vanished. Meanwhile, on the other side, next, next, a gray rainbow. Oh, I love that. I love the idea of a gray rainbow. Two moons in a long, wet night. Love that. Discovery. You're not yourself today. The morning is wiser than the night. Surprise day. Next. I love that. Pay attention day, the porridge, the apple, thunder on the rails, farther afield. I don't know for sure, but my thinking is I want to incorporate these in here somewhere. You know, you always add sentiments or phrases or words or something. And I want to add these. I really liked 
these of all of them that I looked at. When I tore this off, most of them had offset large letters, drop caps. I cut that out. So now I have a whole bunch of these letters. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, but I'd like to include them in the book. These are all the pages that I tore out. Now, there's a about a billion videos on what to do with book pages. You can make all kinds of embellishments and tags and bookmarks and belly bands and corner tucks. And if you fold it 78 ways, you can make a boat. I mean, there's a million things you can do with all these pages. So I'm going to hang on to these pages. If I don't use them in this project, certainly for painty paper, for collage, coffee dye them there's there's lots and lots and lots of things that can be done with these i could go in and take more of the letters out i left a lot of the titles because they didn't strike me at that moment so i left them something may strike me later so i've got a lot of stuff to work with and i i just wanted to get started with this right away because oftentimes you get it all together and don't start right away the initial energy for the project the initial excitement for the project dissipate and that's no fun so i don't know how far i'll get today or what exactly i'm going to do today i thought i would bring you with me i recently found these in my basement purge that green is the perfect green this is ribbon it looks like washi tape but it's ribbon and it's sealed apparently this came from fort knox i'm gonna get those out beautiful colors kind of fall kind of kind of bright but kind of fall ish i don't intend this to be a fall journal i don't intend it to be a seasons anything i just i just want to put pretty stuff in it so i have a digital kit that i purchased that i know i want to use on this at least part on this page because of the alpina library sticker so what i'm going to do is leave this but put that pretty green might as well go print that and do that because i know that it's what i want to do it's kind of like being at janet nash's house i have a nice cool drink raspberry mint green tea and some nuts macadamia and pumpkin seeds for a snack yeah perfect I recently found this in my basement purge. This might make a nice cover. I don't even know where I got this, but this, it looks brown on camera. It's actually this, a darker version of this green, a, a dark green. That might be kind of cool. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. While we're waiting for my printer to print, I said in a, my flower pounding video that I would try fall leaves when they came out. Well, I did, and I, I pounded the bejesus out of them, but they were too dry. And the only thing that made any mark was the stem. And I just tried a little tiny piece about yay big. I just put a, a couple fall leaves and I folded it over and pounded it away. And, and you could only see just the teeniest little tiny bits of stems. Well, later I was doing something else with vinegar. And the vinegar got on that sample that I had tried to make. I, when I looked at it, it brought the vinegar reacted with something in whatever did come out of the leaves that I couldn't see, but it reacted and it made a pattern. So then I went out and I got more leaves and I pounded the bejesus out of them. And again, not much happened at all. This one is green. This one had the most, when I pounded it, you could kind of see that it was something was happening but the rest of them were different shades of orange and red and different different levels of dryness or not but the green one of course was sort of fresh they were all fallen leaves and so i i still i pounded the bejesus out of it and then i hit it with vinegar and wow stuff started to happen <laughs> i don't know if it's a mold that was on the leaves um, they were clean so it's not dirt i don't know what exactly it is but this rusty stuff was from my my dirty old hammer. I let it rest there, and then I saw that the rust was doing some really cool things. Like right here, you can see the this, this angle of the hammer. This is the claw part of the hammer. 
when I saw that was happening, I sprayed the hammer with vinegar and then I just kind of wiped it all over the place so that I would get that rusty stuff all over. And I just let the vinegar and the leaves just sit there for a while and do what they're going to do. And this is what they did. I don't know what that red is. I have no idea where the red and the pink came from. No idea. But, but that leaf sure did come out nice. And they all did. I really like, even though they're very subtle, it looks like sometimes you'll see ghost leaves on the sidewalk from the sun and the rain. They leave kind of their shadow forever, which is kind of cool. I love that. Look at the detail in that green leaf. So even if you don't have flowers in bloom right now, find some leaves because they work. The leaves worked best even in the flower painting. They came out so detailed. But isn't that gorgeous? This is the stem. Look how black that turned. It is just jet black. It's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Not what I expected. I was hoping I'd just get nice bright red and orange and yellow leaf like the flowers. But this is what I got. And it's. It, I think it's really sort of cool. So this would make kind of a cool cover as well if i wanted to use that as a cover that would be pretty too i'm not going to stop there might as well keep going when i first bought my house everything every room in the house was some variation of purple and green and i still love the combination but i'm kind of over it you know like mauve and hunter green and navy blue was the thing of the 80s if i never see that color color combination again I'm going to be good with it. I love the color combo, but not necessarily for homeware. This would make a really cool... I think I have five of them. Uh, this would make a cool... These are placemats, by the way. They're just either placemats or extra large dish rags. I don't, I don't remember. But they would make a nice cover. And I love that. And I just saw a video. I haven't watched it yet, but it came up on my feed on how to make a tote bag with two placemats so i want now i want to make a tote bag and i have four so i could either make a giant tote, tote bag or two tote bags or a lined tote bag or something i don't know but those are more things these are some treasures that i found in my basement purge that i recently spoke about the video i don't know if it's out yet or if it'll be out soon talked at length about my my basement purge okay i reprinted it because as much as i like this i don't want to cover up this whole thing and this digital kit has these nice already distressed old crinkled brown faded edges and I didn't if I if I only use it on if I only use half of it I'm gonna have one really one or two really cool sides and then just cut and I don't want that so I, I scaled it down on my printer queue to about 65% of this isn't 100% 100% would fill the page so this I scaled back but not quite well it worked for what I was thinking but then I came to my senses and I don't want to do that so now if I trim this off and by trim it I mean tear it because I don't want a nice clean edge on that on that vintage look. I want it kind of dirty like that. That's perfect. So yes, once in a while I do I do trim. I'd rather not though. This to me is such a waste of time. And paper. Of course we know no scrap but left behind. We know that there are loads of things you can do with that. Especially if you trim a lot. If I did Right now, I'm going to have four of these very, they're all going to be the same size. That'd make a nice little uh, notebook or collect them all together, fold them, and have a nice miniature concertina style journal. I mean, there's a lot that can be done with those off cut. These, I did a video not too long ago about how to make faux washi tape. Super easy and fun, and they're beautiful and one of a kind. You don't have the same washi tape that everyone else in the world has. Okay, so now I have this this smaller piece, and I like that. Even though it's not quite long enough, I'm okay with that. I can put something down there. 
and that would be done. And what I was thinking of for these is cutting them. I don't know why I had so much left, but cutting them or tearing them. I think tearing them might be better maybe. Well, maybe these I will cut so I have some more control over the shape and size. But what I was thinking here is just to take them, either spray them with my coffee dye or take forever and, and vintage photo them and then just put them all around randomly on the covers. I don't necessarily need them to say anything at all, but I think that might be kind of cool to do it all over the place. Just early ideas. Now, I don't want to overthink this. I don't want to be sitting here in an hour and a half and still not have anything done. So I know I want this in the cover. I know I want to grunge it up a little bit further. So all of the cleaning I have done in this room several times over, I have, I still have not found my vintage photo dauber. It has just up and completely disappeared, which is bizarro to me. One of the reasons I love to, to, uh, tear it is because the torn edge takes the vintage photo or whatever color you're distressing with it just takes it so much better just gonna grunge it up just a little bit more oh look i did dig some of this out too a number of you had suggested instead of melting it digging it out with a spoon and smearing it and i did try it I don't like it. It's too time consuming for my taste. Luckily, I just restocked on my Avery glue. So I have some nice fresh sticks that I can play with. And that's always fun. I like to go around the edge and just really make sure I get those edges. Because if you have the edges really down tight, the rest is going to lay there nice. Put it here. X marks the spot. Doesn't have an up or down, but sometimes it just feels right one way over the other. I'm just going to tear this down a little bit more because I had three torn sides and one cut side. And that looks goofy to me. As does this loop, loopy, loopy, loopy. Looks like someone chewed it off. I'm going to try to clean up that tear. So it looks torn rather than chewed. Hit that with the same dis vintage photo. And I don't know, you know, both are, are completely universal and whatnot, but vintage to me is fall and winter. Just want to cozy in with the warms and the old fashioned wallpaper and the, it just seems very vintage to me that you're going to heat the house with a fireplace and roast chestnuts on an open fire and, and do all these things. And then the brights, the bright colors and the bright whites are for summer and spring. <laughs> it has all these names on it. I don't know if I like that or not. Can I just tear? I'm just going to see if I can tear Get most of that off. I just want the really cool. Now this is naturally aged. It's, it's a book cover from 1940. One, I think it was. Now, I don't have to do much to age this at all, but because I'm tearing it, this edging has become nice and bright. And so I'm just going to hit that with the vintage photo. I don't want anything bright white in my vintage opening pages here. And I'm totally not overthinking this because if I did, I'd go, mm, do I really want that there? I don't know. Do I want that on the front page? You know, and you drive yourself bananas with that kind of stuff. Uh, whereas if you just do it, it's done and you get to move on. I feel like it needs something else. Though. But what? So until I know that, I'm not going to glue anything down. I'm going to try not to overthink it. I need to do, I'm going to do the same thing I just did to the back here. Another piece. We'll keep these together so I can do something with them later. This is just a an old wooden sewing thread spool with the Tim Holtz pad stuck to it, glued to it. And I'm using Distress Oxide versus Distress Ink. Sometimes I like to, to crunch the page a little bit. And, and then go over it because where it was crunched... It picks up that vintage photo or that whatever color you're you're rubbing on it really well. 
I'll just go all the way around. Sometimes I go around twice, mostly because I can't remember where I started. It's looking like it's not wanting to lay down. Just give it some more love. Okay. Now, I'm also going to pick just a random page. I'm not sure. I've not done a book like this yet, so I don't know for sure. But because of the glue book thing, if you start in the front and you work your way back, it, it wonks up the spine, and I don't want that. I want my spine to stay good and square like it is right now. So I'm going to work a little bit in the middle of this part, and then a little bit in the middle of this part, and the next thing I do will might be in the back, and then after that, way up at the front, and then repeat that so that I'm moving all over the place in order to keep a nice square spine. I also don't want a gator mouth, meaning narrow up here and it gets so full of stuff that it won't close. I want it to still be a nice, normal book. And so as I'm filling it, if I find that it's getting chunky, I'll just tear out more, more of the original book pages. That's my plan anyway. Sounds like I know what I'm doing, right? Yeah, don't count on it. Hey, what about some of that ribbon that you just pulled out? Won't that go nice? Well, sure. Well, cheese and crackers, they don't want you to get into this anytime soon. Getting ahead of myself. Trim is the last thing, really. All right, so I said I want to start in the middle. Let's start in the middle in the back, just because. We're going to start at this page, just because. Another thing that I, I keep thinking about, and I'm just going to go ahead and do a few right now, is I want different different uh, size pages, different edges on the pages. So I'm just going to tear off these two and work then with these like that. I'm going to take this yellowy one. Take one of my tearing rulers that I made. These are Dollar Tree tearing, excuse me, I got a three pack of Dollar Tree rulers and made different edges on them. This one I took my Dremel tool to, this thing that I use on my nails, and I just went zip, 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 and I made sort of a scallop. It's not perfect and I didn't want it to be perfect. This one I took my box cutting knife and literally just hacked away at it hacked away this way and when i was happy with that i turned it the other way and hacked a few chunks out of it this way so that this is very odd shaped too and you'll have to watch the video because i have no idea what i did on this third one i might have cut that one too i don't know i have no idea but they all three have very different surrounded by effing 12 year olds look at me look at me i didn't get enough attention when i was three. Oh my god perpetually 12 years old anyway if you go to amazon and look up tearing rulers they're 20 to 30 dollars a piece of course they're meant to tear watercolor which is a lot heavier than copy paper but i got these when it was still a dollar tree so i got three for a dollar and there is is there is flimsy as paper so it took nothing to cut them wear safety glasses use your head you know don't play with sharp things if you shouldn't be playing with sharp things but it took me no time at all to make these three tearing rulers so i'm going to use one of these i think that jaggedy one is the one i want speaking of tearing rulers another thing that i did this is the tearing part when you when you open a new thing of saran wrap you pull, you pull a thing, and this bottom part comes off. Mm -hmm. That's all that is. And that makes a fine tear, too. But I want this one more jagged. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jagged it up here. And what I find is easier is if you put the small side of this, this. This is small compared to the large piece of paper. What I see a lot of people do is put the tearing ruler here and try to pick this tiny little thing and tear here versus putting the little piece under the ruler and you have this whole big thing to grab onto. 
since it's so flimsy and it doesn't have a gripper underneath like the regular tearing ruler does you got to really press down when you're tearing like move your fingers otherwise it'll slip out on you like that it's even though i know it and i'm trying to hang on to it it still slipped now when it slips like that i line it back up and then i start from the bottom otherwise it's just going to keep going sideways on you so i'm going to start at the bottom and tear up to where it went sideways and you can see that it's junky there so i'm just going to take my my super sharp snips and snip that off but that's a nice clean cut against the rest of the jag i'm just going to rough it up by putting that in the middle of my in the v of my blade right there and rough it up where did it go oh i did such a good job i don't know but that's a nice easy way to rough up something that you want roughed up so that's good now i have to decide it is exactly the same no, it's just a whisper longer than the pages that are in there. Does that bother me? That it no, I guess it doesn't. And for me, there's a lot of figuring it out as I go. There's just a lot of that. And I, I find that it can't be helped, really. That, you know, sometimes you just gotta work it out. Because I don't have a plan. Because I don't know the hell I'm doing at this very moment or every moment. I just don't and that's okay you know that's part of the fun is trying to figure it out you know giving your brain a little bit of a workout it's not a bad thing so i'm gonna line it up to that line that i just made and make sure that it's close to straight and again try and hold it super steady and it's already wanting to slide oh you dirty bastard all right. Sometimes it's best to do it fast, too, like tearing off a Band-Aid. You know, I don't want it perfect, but I don't want it jacked up either. All right, I'm just going to say that that's good. I'm going to glue here in the center. These aren't the right pages. Look at me go. <laughs> All right, well, because if I close it, those are going to stick together now, so. Let's stick something in there. This beautiful script page. I'm gonna pretend like I meant this and we're just gonna keep moving forward. Fold that in half. And since I've already started, but it's the wrong page, I'm gonna continue. Put that in there. Where's my good ruler? I want my nice heavy duty metal ruler. I'm going to make sure my Text is upright, and my text is upright because, you know, she loses her mind over upside down and sideways pages. And I'm just going to put that right there in the center, like that, and glue the rest of it down. Let the book kind of do the work. I'm not going to glue all the way to the edge because I have to cut some of this edge off or tear some of this edge off. Maybe not, because I didn't have that page either. Jesus, I'm not paying any attention whatsoever to what I'm doing, apparently. Or did I? Yes, I got it right. Oh, my God. I worry about me, too. Yes, I do. Time for a drink. Is it tea? Really? Yes, it's just tea. Sometimes you feel like you're not. Sometimes you don't. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Oh, I just got junk all over my pretty paper. I laid my pretty paper down on my open ink pad. Dipshitsky. See? And it bled through. Looky there. Nice, juicy, brand new ink pad. All right, we're going to do what we just did with the other one. Glue down in that spine. It's perfectly okay, by the way. We can just cover it up with something. It's, it's not a big deal at all not at all so fret not those of you who are fretting this is a fret free zone pull out one of my little scrap pieces of glue paper and glue right up to that edge that's what matters and then
let it lay down. Okay, so we got a couple pages and I already have some variation, even though I didn't plan it that way. That's how it worked out. Now I can probably tear that off or cut that off or somehow otherwise get rid of that. Or I might leave it because I kind of like that nice clean edge on this side. On this side, maybe if I, uh, if I do this, really accentuate the fact that the edges are all different. I love that paper. This paper is one of my digital kits that's available on eBay. It's just basic papers for those people who don't have a lot of different papers or who don't have a lot of stencils to make pretty papers. I made a whole bunch of different papers in a digital form. There's round craft paper and graph paper and vintage paper and stenciled paper and all kinds. I'll link that below. I'll also put that available on my Patreon shop. Most of my stuff is going to move over to my Patreon shop. But if you're already established on Etsy, that would be an easy purchase. All right, let's do one more very similar thing in that I'm just going to put a page in and then I want to be done with this project because I have some other things that I want to do today yet. So all I'm going to do is put in this one more piece of paper. But if you want to do something similar, you know, you have a lot to do. You have to find your book. And then tear out your pages and that takes time i'll bet i spent a good hour last night tearing out pages gather a few papers if you want an easy thing go and get the the paper kit the digital papers and you know one of them has 16 another one has i don't know 30 they're pretty big kits so you have a lot of variety and they range from vintage to kind of grungy to kind of modern and if you want to do an eclectic a, uh, an eclectic book with me that would give you a really good start i'm just going to glue this one in as is i like to go back and forth so that there's a lot of glue because that gives me a little bit of play if there's a lot of glue in there it gives me a little bit of room to maneuver it if i need to make sure my text is upright and my text is upright And then just a little bit of glue on that page and then around these edges. Now because it goes so far down into that spine, it doesn't come all the way out to the page. And I'm okay with that. That could be a place for, not this particular one, but that would be a great place for some washi trim or some, some page edging of some sort. It doesn't have to be, obviously this doesn't even match, so I wouldn't ever do that, but it could be, it could be anything, any kind of washi that you have, or ribbon, or another piece of paper that you put on here and then fold over to this page. There's all kinds of options that you can do to get rid of that tiny bit of white space, or you could leave it. You know, white spaces are friends sometimes. It, every single, thing doesn't have to be covered and dripping in feathers and butterflies and oh yanni kahani it can just be a nice plain page i always close the book to me that helps get it in the right spot but it doesn't always work you know sometimes you still get you still get wrinkles and bubbles you know i try i don't want wrinkles and bubbles but if i get them the world is still going to spin on its axis and we'll just cover it up with something don't let that kind of thing it's a junk journal you know it's an altered book it's a craft nothing is perfect all right well that is all that i'm going to do today i am going to put these together in here so i know that you know that's one thing that you can do to help you if you keep going and keep going and keep going with a project until you hit a wall, you don't know where to start the next time. But if you stop when you're enjoying it, you know, kind of stop in the middle of something and leave yourself, okay, this is what I'm going to do next. It's so much easier to come back to that project. So I'm going to leave these beautiful papers and these beautiful scraps and this matchy matchy piece in here. And that'll be my next page for the next time. So I'll know exactly what I want to do. So if you want to play along with this project 
we'll call it an eclectic altered book. Let's just call it that, an eclectic altered book. If you want to play along, find yourself a book. I suggest just over nine by six, but it doesn't have to be. I've seen beautiful altered books that are just little guys, so it doesn't have to be any certain size. That's what I'm using. Collect a few of your favorite papers, scrapbook paper, painty paper, fun sprayed paper, magazine pages, book pages, wrapping paper, craft paper, anything that you have wanted to use, not sure where, not sure when, now is the time. Gather those up in a place. Um, and if you find some things like this that you want to use to gather those up, take apart your book. If you want to do the traveler's notebook style in the, in the middle, find the middle of the book and take out a good chunk depends on how thick you want your traveler's notebook. I usually put in about 10 folded pieces of copy paper, so that's 20 pages, 40 pages to write on. That's a that's a pretty hefty book in the middle of another book. Tear out the center and then then tear out every few pages until it feels right. Again, leave these front ones intact. You don't want to fight with tearing them out because of the way they're already glued in. Go back quite you know five six eight pages in and then start tearing same thing from the back to leave these beautiful pages in and we'll just cover them up so if you want to play along you have a lot to do between now and the next time we meet and i have no idea when that's going to be <laughs> you'll be the first to know mm -hmm. yes indeed and if it comes with a dust jacket save that and we'll make this into a soft cover journal as well project for another day until we meet again, go love up your Beastlies. Give them lots and lots of extra love and patience because they are so patient with us. Holy man, they wait and they wait and they wait for us to be home from work, done with dinner, done with the homework, done with our crafts. They wait for us forever. The least we can do is be patient with them. Beanie's over there staying out of it. Smart boy. Onlookers. Maybe not. The growling is Bitsy, just in case there's any question. Much I get the lake. Out for now. <laughs>